All right, in today's video, we're gonna actually use the nets of pyramids to find their surface area. So we're gonna start real quick. This is the same image we looked at yesterday and then the same cardboard uh, example that we used to kind of show that a net folds to construct that pyramid, okay? And we know that a pyramid um, always has lateral faces that are triangular. Um, and so you can see right here, a square pyramid is a pyramid with a square base. Most of the pyramids we'll be working with um, will either be triangular uh, or um, square. They won't actually be a lot of rectangular prisms because we find that the um, e you know equilateral nature of the base um, does, does make it a little simpler, one less step for you. So the first example we're gonna do, we're actually gonna do together, um, you can see um, that there are some steps to follow when you wanna find the surface area of a pyramid. Um, you know, first you wanna draw the net, and then you want to label all the dimensions and then find the area of each um, shape. And you can see right here, I've labeled bottom, side, 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 side. The good news is um, we can tell that it's got a rectangular or a square base. So once we find the area of one side, we'll know the area of all the sides. And remember, the surface area is calculated by adding up the area of the bottom and then all four of those sides. So let's take uh, each of these pieces. And for our purposes, um, I'm just going to kind of take a look at this figure here and you can see that the base of this is clearly a square because it told us it was a square pyramid and that's where we got that these dimensions here are all sevens. So let's get that out of the way. We've got a square that's got a length of seven and a width of seven. So length times width seven times seven. Clearly that equals 49 meters squared. So that's going to be the area of the bottom, 49 meters squared, 49 meters squared. So the more difficult part is the triangle because, of course, we have to use our triangle formula. Um, and we can see that the, the lateral face is 10 meters high. So if we uh, look at any one of these, we'll use this one since the height is labeled as 10, and we know that the base is 7, we're essentially thinking of this triangle, height of 10 and a base of seven. So we would use our formula for triangle, one half the base times the height. And we'll substitute our values. The seven is my base and the 10 is my height. Now, I could use my associative property and choose to multiply the seven times 10 first, or I could use my commutative property and switch the order of the 10 and the seven and instead write it like this because that allows me to do half of 10 is five and five times seven equals 35. Now the good news is because this is a, uh, a rectangular or a square prism, once I know that one of those lateral faces is 35 meters squared, I know all of them are 35 meters squared. So I can write that in very quickly and know that to get my final answer of my surface area, I simply need to add up 35, 35, 35, 35, and 49. So I'm going to get an area of 189 meters squared. All right, not too bad, right? So basically our, our steps are find the area of your base and then find the area of each of those lateral faces, add them all up. Common errors people make is they forget the base or they forget to use the formula for area of a triangle when they're finding the area of those uh, faces. They get so excited and just rush through and don't think about those faces being triangular. All right, so um, when we get to a triangular pyramid, people are on different sides of this argument. Some people think that triangular pyramids are easier because you're only dealing with triangles and you've got less sides to add. Other people think rectangular pyramids are easier or square pyramids are easier because, of course, uh, the area formula for a square or rectangle is simpler. Um, but either way, it's the same process. You want to find the area of each part. And the beginning of that is obviously drawing your net. So I had shown the example of my net, of my uh, triangular pyramid. And you could see that that's pretty easily constructed out of cardboard there. Um, and so you start here, you unfold it, and then there's your net. And so we're going to use a very similar looking figure, and we're going to find the area of this uh, triangular pyramid. Again, draw the net, label the dimensions, find the area of each 
uh, shape. Now, this net's gonna be a little bit more difficult because it was drawn to scale, and you'll note that the base is different sized than each of the lateral faces. And in order to make the numbers actually work, it meant that our height of that base is a decimal number. It's gonna make this problem more difficult, there's no doubt, but we can plug through and get, get, it, get it done. So let's focus on that, that base first. So I'm gonna just basically draw a larger version of that same triangle and label it a little bit neater or a little bit you know, easier for me to see, all right? Because I can see it's got a base of six and a height of 5.2. Now I can write my formula one half base times height and write one half times six times 5.2. I'm gonna, of course, do half of six to get the, the whole number three. And now all I've gotta do is multiply three times 5.2. That's no big deal. So I'm gonna show my work here to the side. And it looks like after I placed my decimal point in my product, remember I stole one, gave it back, or one was in my um, factor, so I've got one in my product. So my answer for the area of the base is 15.6 feet squared. So that's the, the bottom, 15.6 feet squared, 15.6 feet squared. So that part actually was pretty painless, even though it had that decimal. So a lot of times we get nervous about it, but it wasn't anything to be worried about. Now I'm gonna take a look at my lateral faces, and you can see that the lateral faces are taller, and in the um, label, you can see that the height is eight feet, while the base is only six feet. You might have noticed when I labeled it that I didn't um, write feet in here, and that was just to save space. My, my initial problem clearly indicates that my label is gonna be in feet, and so if I follow my formula protocol, I'll worry about that label at the very end. So my formula, again, is one half, times the base times the height. In this case, one half times the six times the eight. And this is one that I can clearly do in my head and get an answer of 24 feet squared, which means each of these sides is 24 feet squared. And as I take the time to label these, you'll see that um, I lined up my decimal point when I made my column of numbers here. Uh, Sometimes students, when they go to add numbers that include decimals, they forget that whole numbers feature a decimal point as well. So I'm gonna rewrite this as 24.0 feet so that it lines up with that decimal. And if I uh, add this all up correctly, um, I'm gonna get 87.6 feet squared as the surface area of this triangular pyramid. So um, those two examples kind of had everything laid out for us, um, but that's basically the process we're going to follow for finding surface area of pyramids. So I'm hoping that you can follow those steps and do it on your own.